Welcome to Ignani.com. Microsoft SQL Server 2012. Chapter 2, SQL Server 2012 Tools. Part B, Connecting to SQL Server 2012. In the previous video, I introduced you to SQL Server Management Studio 2012, and its various windows and panes. In this video, I will show you how to connect to SQL Server 2012 using SQL Server Management Studio. Let us start SQL Server Management Studio. Press Windows key plus Q, and search for SQL Server Management Studio. Click on the icon to launch it. When you launch SQL Server Management Studio, you are presented with a Connect to Server dialog box. This is where you will be providing the details about the server that you would want to connect. Your login screen may look a little bit different from what you see here depending on the machine from which you are logging in. Obvious difference will be the server name and username, unless you have used the same as I have. Server Type This drop-down relates to the SQL Server feature that you would be logging into. Other than the database engine which is selected by default, it includes other options such as analysis services, reporting services, and integration services. Select the type of server you would want to work on. For this demonstration, I will select database engine. Server name. This drop down lists the various servers installed for the server type selected. In our case, we selected the database engine. Hence, this drop down lists all the SQL server installations that the Connect to Server dialog box knows about, or those that were connected to earlier. If I change the server type to Analysis Services, the items in the server name drop down also changes. Notice the name of the computer, Capricorn, and the SQL server instance name, SQL2012 is selected by default, since it was the instance that was used last. We need to specify the computer name and the instance name, only if we are connecting to a named instance or if we want to connect to an instance that is on a different machine. However, if we have to connect to a default instance installed on the local machine, we can simply enter a period, or enter the word localhost, or local. Sometimes. You can get into a situation wherein, you can't remember the exact name of the server you would like to connect. In such scenarios, simply click on the down arrow to the right of the server name drop down, which will display a list of instances that you have connected to recently. If the instance you would want to connect is not there, you can scroll to the end of the list and select browse for more option. This will tell SQL Server Management Studio to search through the network and will return a dialog box with a list of all the instances that were found. You can see that it has found two instances of SQL Server running on the machine. With this, it also shows the instances of analysis, reporting, and integration services that it found. Select the instance that you would want to connect and click OK. Authentication. This drop-down allows you to choose the authentication mechanism that you would like to use, to log in into SQL Server. It provides two options, Windows Authentication and SQL Server Authentication. We are getting these two options since we selected Mixed Mode Authentication while installing SQL Server. Windows Authentication, allows users to log in using the Windows Users and Groups that are mapped with corresponding SQL Server logins. When using this mode of authentication, users are validated through the Windows domain. These users are mapped to SQL Server roles which will identify what the user is authorized to do. Notice the username and password fields are disabled. This mode does not require the user to enter the username and password. It picks up the credentials of the user who is logged into the system. SQL Server Authentication, allows users to log in using SQL Server logins. This mode will only be available if you have configured SQL Server to use Mixed Mode Authentication. 
Notice the username and password fields are enabled when you select SQL Server authentication from the authentication drop down box. A user needs to enter a valid username and password to connect to the SQL Server. For advanced users, who would like a bit more control in connecting to the SQL Server, you have the Options button, which will display the Connection Properties tab, where you can specify additional parameters. I will cover this part in the tutorial SQL Server 2012 administration. Now that you are familiar with the Connect to Server dialog box, let us connect to SQL Server. I will be using the Windows authentication mode. To connect to the instance, first select the server type as database engine. Then, enter the computer name followed by a backslash and then the SQL Server instance name into the server name field. Select Windows Authentication from the Authentication drop-down. Click Connect. And that is all it takes to connect to a SQL Server. Advanced Concepts While it was very simple to connect, a SQL Server Management Studio has done a lot of work for you in the background. Once you entered all the options to log in, the SQL Server Management Studio gathers all the data as needed, and creates a connection string which it then sends to the server. If everything is valid, SQL Server accepts and a connection handle is returned back. SQL Server Management Studio will use this connection handle for all its further actions, until we disconnect, or timeout expires. If the connection string is not correct, then we will get an appropriate message back. In our next video, I will cover the Object Explorer and Object Explorer Details page of SQL Server Management Studio 2012. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much, much more at our site www.ignani.com. Post all your questions at our site. We will be happy to help you. We want your learning process to be as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.